Eric D. Blocker with Full Man MMA joined today by UFC featherweight Chase Hooper, who's going to be fighting Steve Garcia on October 29th. Chase, how are things? Good. Uh, happy to get a quick turnaround. And uh, yeah, I was feeling it after the last fight. I was ready for the next one. So uh, glad to have it locked in so soon and ready to get back to work. Yeah, absolutely. I know you had a, an impressive finish, uh, third round finish, if that's correct. Um, uh, I mean, you said you were pretty high after that uh, that last fight. Uh, how have things been since then? Good. Yeah. I, um, just, uh, I don't know. I had a little bit of time off obviously to handle, uh, life stuff, you know, I had to get my wisdom teeth taken out and all that. So now that that's all squared away, I'm uh, ready to get back to work. So yeah, I, I feel good and, you know, get another win here start trying to make my way up the division. Um, I feel like I'm starting to get a good, um, understanding of like my own style and, kind of, I guess, like the easiest path to victory for me in, in these fights coming up. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like I made a lot of progress and I, I think it really showed. So hoping to show you even more here in October. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, just out of curiosity, is this fight at featherweight? Because I know Steve Garcia usually fights at lightweight. Yeah, so I, I think he had his contender fight at 35 and miss weight for that. And then I believe he had a short notice at 45 and miss weight. So they bumped him to 55 and then he had a couple fights there. Now he's trying to go with 45. Um, yeah. So 45, as far as I know, as far as the contract says, so I'm making 145. Yeah. I was going to say, you're not too concerned about a potential size or strength advantage there. I mean, you're a six, one featherweight. So. Yeah. And, and Garcia in his 55 fights, he's not like a crazy shredded, like monster or anything. So I'm not, I'm not worried about some guy that's, um, you know, trying to be like a, a weight bully, I guess, you know, trying to come down a division and, and be crazy strong or anything. Um, I think 45 is probably more his natural division because he looks a little um, like he doesn't look like he has to cut a ton to get to 55. So how's the cut for you to 145 being such a tall featherweight? Like, do you think you'll eventually have to move up in the future? I think definitely. Um, you know what, though? I've, I've been really using the Performance Institute because uh, they're with uh, Icon Meals now. They've been helping me uh, as far as the dieting stuff goes. It made it super easy, um, you know, to actually just have help with the dieting instead of just winging it like I usually do. Uh, and then same thing, having them for the weight cut, too. They really just kind of streamlined the whole process and uh, made it a lot less miserable than it has been in the past. So I think um, obviously the, the weight cuts always suck and they, um, I probably cut towards the higher end of the division. I probably cut m more weight than most people, but, um, I think it's, uh, I'm in a spot right now where I can kind of stay here and, and be healthy as long as I'm staying up with like supplements and stuff. Um, you know, especially when I start dieting, like making sure that I'm just keeping the nutrients and such up. So I'm not destroying my body just to make weight. We see, uh, I was curious, like out of camp, I mean, this is only five months between fights for you. So I would imagine you didn't binge or anything uh, on a bunch of junk food, but you know, some fighters kind of balloon up other ones like to stick to their diet. Like how, how do you kind of handle that? I honestly, I just kind of, um, I just don't check my weight in the between fights and I just kind of do whatever, whatever feels right at the moment. Sometimes, uh, some fights I do feel like, uh, I think it's kind of when they are more back to back with heavy dieting than after I feel like I need to binge eat a little bit, but this one, I felt like, uh, I think I probably took a week of kind of eating whatever. And then I felt ready to kind of get back in, in, uh, to more of a healthy, uh, type of diet, I guess, and, and get ready again. Cause I knew they'd probably want me back a little sooner than, uh, than the last time. So I, uh, yeah, I was trying to, stay ready and instead of having to do a crazy diet to get down to uh, 145 this time. So I think, uh, I don't think I'm as big cause I got sick and stuff and I had my wisdom teeth taken out. So I don't think I've put on as much weight as I normally do, which will be nice. Um, want we'll to cut as much. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. This is going to be your sixth fight in the UFC. Uh, that's correct. Right. Six fights. Um, I think so. yeah. What's the biggest difference between the Chase Hooper that's going to be fighting in October and the one that we saw in 2018 win the Contender Series contract? I uh, I actually, I didn't watch my Contender Series fight back, but I watched uh, 245 the other week. Um, and 
I, I feel like a completely different fighter from then um, to now. And from that fight, I felt even completely different from my contender fight. So I feel like, I, um, you know, obviously part of it's my age and, and just putting the time in as far as the training goes. Um, but I feel like I've made a couple of like evolutions, I guess, as, as far as the skill sets go. Um, just looking a lot more comfortable in there and, and not making as many huge errors. Uh, you know, little stuff like keeping my hands up a lot better, not getting clipped with these huge, heavy shots. Um, you know, my wrestling game's been stepped up, uh, ground and pound, striking, defense. I'm, I'm just trying to kind of become a more well-rounded fighter. And, you know, I, I would definitely beat up the the me from 2018, that's for sure. So it's always uh, – forward movement's always good. Are you still on the Contender Series contract? Um, I don't think so. No, not the, not the same one because that was a developmental contract. So I already had, I already had two or three fights. I already had three fights on a UFC contract by the time I made my debut. Um, so I think I'm on my third contract now. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. So hopefully they keep me around and, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm in a lot better spot than I was and, uh, yeah, you know, obviously this is kind of one of those sports where people are, everybody's trying to take your spot and you kind of have to keep proving that you deserve to be there. And I, I feel, I guess, ready for that responsibility to myself, I guess, to, to prove that I belong here and, and to keep my spot on the roster. So, yeah, just uh, onward and upward as far as that goes. Well, and you do a pretty good job marketing yourself, too. I mean, you have a pretty big following on social media. Uh, the UFC likes to use you for a lot of their marketing materials. Like, that certainly seems to think they're not going to, you know, they're going to want to keep you around for a good long while. Yeah, I hope not. seems to be a pretty uh, mutually beneficial relationship so far. So I'm trying to keep it that way. And, uh, yeah, I I'm hoping that they uh, feel that as well. So, yeah, it's been good so far. The only reason I ask is because I was listening to Dominic Cruz on Helwani's show earlier this week, and he was talking about, you know, not having a manager and kind of dealing with all the contract negotiations himself. You're kind of doing the same thing, right? You're not signed to a management team or anything. Yeah. So my coach does, uh, he's the one that talks with Sean Shelby as far as like the matchmaking and stuff goes and as far as the contracts go, just so there's somebody else to be mad at, you know, like you never want, I guess, to be the guy that like makes somebody one of the higher ups mad uh so it's always nice to have that buffer a little bit but uh you know and and more than like a regular manager he knows my fighting style so he's not just gonna like say yes to whatever matchup they offer like he's gonna try to get me the best um fight for my uh you know skill set that type of thing so it's and he's more invested than i feel like a lot of these other like mma managers are a lot of managers will, you know, kind of use their fighters as pawns, like the ones they don't care about as much. They're like, oh, I'll take I'll take a poor matchup for this guy. If you give the guy that I really want that's making me more money, if you give him a better matchup. So it's like, you know, I, I'm in this spot where like my coach is my guy, like and, and it's the same way around. Like both of us are are kind of on this together. Um, we're in the same boat. So he wants my success as quite a bit more than uh, anybody else's so it's just uh that's kind of another issue with the managers is there's not really that uh relationship i guess and you're you're just paying them for stuff that you could do on your own or or have someone like your coach do um it's not rocket science and especially like dominic cruz was saying like with the sponsorship stuff you don't you're not able to get sponsors um and even with that being said like it you don't need someone to go out and seek them, seek them out for you. Like it's, it's there if you're willing to put the work in. Um, I, for one, am more than willing to give someone money for like, if they're able to find me sponsors, I'm like, okay, that's fair. You're making me money that I wasn't able to have before. Um, but I just don't like people taking money out of my fight paycheck and being like, Oh, we got you more money on your contract. It's like, well, me winning that got me more money on my contract. That's the reason I'm still here. It's not like the managers like to make it seem like they do more than than they actually do for you. So it's kind of a little bit of a scam, I think. Um, MMA fighters are known for being kind of gullible. But uh, I heard somebody on the Internet was saying that NFL management 
takes 3% max where uh, the MMA managers, like you'd be lucky to find someone that was like, Oh, I'll only do 10%. 15, 20 is, is the standard. So they're taking a crazy amount of your money for a pretty low effort. And uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the shady part to me. So I try to stay away from that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. How long have you been with, uh, with your coach that kind of does all this stuff for you? Uh, since day one, I, I literally started back at his gym when I was, you know, eight years old. And then, uh, yeah, he took me from day one all the way to UFC. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a level of trust that you can't build with a management team. That's like, Oh, I'll, I'll get you in UFC. Well, you know, you, you can't just trust somebody like that. Not the same way that you can after, you know, like I was able to watch my coach go from the regional scene to the UFC. I watched his UFC career. Um, so I, and he didn't have a manager, like I, he knew how to do it and he, you know, he did that for me. And, um, again, that's a level of trust that you don't get with a manager, um, with a guy that like is in the trenches with you. That's, that's grinding with you. And that has fought themselves. A lot of these managers haven't fought or haven't trained. They just think of this as a, a good way to get money. And, uh, you know, it's hard to trust a guy like that. It's hard to trust a guy that's, uh, making their money off of my blood, sweat and tears. Um, I feel. Oh, well said. Uh, does your coach do this? Like, does he have experience doing this for any other fighters or are you like kind of his, his sole fo- focus when it comes to UFC negotiations and things like that? Uh, I'm the only guy in UFC right now. Uh, one of my teammates was in one FC for a while. Um, we have, uh, you know, some, some pro guys from my teammates coming up, but, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm just, uh, ahead of the pack. Um, I'm the one that actually listened and took took the right fights and uh, you know won the right fights. So I'm just I'm the one right now. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not super complicated. But uh, yeah, thankful for him uh, doing that for me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit as well because uh, you've made in the past year or two years you've made a few trips out to Stephen Thompson's gym in South Carolina. Do you have any plans to do that before this fight? When was the last time you guys talked? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I think. Uh, I talked to him a pretty good amount um, and, and some of the guys out there, I think I made it out probably two, three weeks before the fight last time. Um, I'm going to try to kind of do the same thing that I did where uh, I went out to South Carolina twice during the camp for the the eight weeks or whatever. So I'll probably try to go early, uh, early to mid September and then have a couple weeks back at home and then uh, head back out there, you know, early October um it's nice to get out and train with those guys like early in the camp get some good like harder sparring in while I'm still uh you know not dieting too heavy and then uh get more technical work in and and still get some good sparring in while I'm uh, a little closer to the fight because they have just a great group of guys down there a great um like team atmosphere I guess like you can actually trust the people that you're training with which is really nice um and they're, they're all great guys down there. So I, I like going down there, getting some more striking training, getting some uh, some different looks as far as the sparring goes. And uh, yeah, it's always a great time. I'm going to definitely go down there this time. Do you get annoyed when people, uh, you know, people tend to think of you kind of as a specialist? Do you get annoyed that you're classified as that? Because you've been kickboxing for almost as long as you've been doing jujitsu. Isn't that right? Um. Yeah, more or less. Uh, I think there was there was a while where I hasn't really stayed up on it. I was definitely more on the jiu-jitsu side of things, um, but is what it is. At the end of the day, I don't care really what people classify me as, as long as I'm winning fights. And, uh, you know, that that's really the only thing that matters. As long as I'm winning fights, as long as I'm keeping Sean, Mick, and uh, Uncle Dana happy, uh, they people can think whatever they want. Um, but, you know, I feel like I have a as far as a grappler, like, I feel like I have a pretty decently like exciting style. Um, so, you know, that people aren't going to say my fights are boring and, uh, yeah, as long as they want to keep watching me, they can call me whatever they want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask as well, uh, the, the, the headliners on your card are two fighters in your division, um, just kind of on the lower end of that top 15. So potentially where you could break in at some point, um Edson Barboza versus Ilya Tuporia I mean fantastic stylistic matchup uh are you going to be watching that fight after yours how excited are you for that one 100 that's that's one as a fan that I'm I'm looking forward to uh 
because Sopuria is still undefeated, I believe, and Barbosa is just a just such a vet. Um, yeah, I I'm so hyped to watch that. It's gonna be such a great matchup, and uh, you know, hoping those guys kind of take both a or take each other out a little bit. Um, just as another forty fiver, they're more striking specialists, but they're well rounded enough that uh, you know I I feel like I need a couple more fights before I start thinking about uh, top fifteen or anything. But um, yeah, definitely gonna be interested to see how those guys match up and and just kind of start looking at that lower end of the of the ranked guys here pretty quick and uh yeah looking forward to it should be an excellent fight well uh chase you've been uh, so generous with your time today before i let you go wanted to give you the chance to shout anything out you have going on i know you're still you got back into twitch streaming recently so anything else you wanted to promote uh the floor is yours uh yeah i'm uh i'm trying to move right now but i'm i'm back on the twitch streaming uh i got all the links to that in my my social medias and uh I don't know. That's about it. I appreciate you having me and uh, yeah, been a good time. Oh, of course. We'll link that below. Chase, best of luck on October 29th. Hopefully I'll get to talk to you after the fight. Sweet. Thank you. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching this video. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe to Full Man MMA. And while you're at it, make sure to hit the bell icon as well so you never miss an update from us.